morning <laughs> and welcome to Irreverent Knits. We have survived, although Judy sounds like she may be not surviving. I am. Okay, she's uh, she's okay. She coughed her way into our, our broadcast. So good morning. I am Tracy from uh, Low Country Shrimp and Knits, and this is Judy from Maggie Loves Yarn, and we are Irreverent Knits. So welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us on this weekly adventure of blathering and uh, talk show equality. We have so much today. We have a list, and it's growing. It's growing this list. So, um, so a few things. We'll get started just right out of the gates with where we have been. So we, you know, we started this whole adventure off as a knit along, and then we've kind of gone like our brains in all these different tangents. So let's uh, show you if you are knitting along with us where we are. Judy, you just I told you guys, y'all, <laughs> that last spring, the next spring, I would finish flaming June. Oh, so goodness. I'm no longer. A sleeve short of a flaming jean. Oh, I'm yes. I'm only half a sleeve short of a flaming jean. <laughs> I have so been closer. working on it. So much closer. So. Yes. So I told you I would do it. Was that next, last summer we started these? Uh, last fall. I was think. it? Maybe August or so. Yeah. It was after the come sail away with me or whatever Yeah, it is. smooth sailing yeah. or whatever that one was. Um, so it is. It's coming. And um, I don't know whether I'll take it to work on, on our travels or whether I'll work on socks um, next week. Because you're on your own next week. I know. I'll be mm -hmm. have to find something else to talk about. Um, so there it is. I am doing it. I will have it done. It's because there's two more sweaters sitting there that I want to start. I know. I know. Well, it's we like have I cast on itis. Finish this, but you wanted me to do it on air. Yeah, so. I know. So no, it's fine. So yeah, so uh, so that's where she is on. I am doing it. I keep my word. On Sometimes. flaming June, that was also my dumpster fire. We called that for my catastrophe. So um, I finished this. This was last. I was was working on this square. This is Nora's vintage blanket. So uh, this was square number one. I've done the whole blanket out of order because you know that's how I be. So what else are you working on? You're so becoming me. I know, God. Through osmosis. You should have heard her yesterday. I'm not gonna do it that way. And I'm gonna take bubbles out, the bubbles out. And I went, mm, you have come to my side. She, well, she sent me this beautiful sweater, but I, I'm looking for something with some nice cabling, and I want a, like a more airy sweater, or something with maybe a little mohair or something a little lighter. And so I found this one pattern, and I'm like, oh, I love this. Okay, love this, and it's got this beautiful kind of intricate cabling just in the middle, and it's supposed to be on like fingering weight, and then mixed with you know either. A, a lace weight or, a, or you know marlet with something uh, mohair and so we have tried every which way till Sunday to find a swatch size that matches it I mean what do we make seven eight swatches you have made them I've just gone uh, no that won't work I'm like the size and I'm going it, there's no way there's no way with either of these weights she's gotten these numbers so I don't know if it's like just this big trick and I'd get so mad during the I think I feel like I'm not supposed to do that sweater now because it's well, you know what? She could have done it and, you know, done it her way and then decide somebody said, you should write the pattern for that. So she wrote it up out of what she remembered. And the thing of it is, if, if they don't do test knitting on it, yeah. you don't catch all those little things. Yeah. Test knitting is... So, and only a few people work. have made it on Ravelry. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is just not meant to be at this well, time. I'll tell you what, we couldn't do it without that app, Knit Tricks. I'm so, not going to sit there with that paper and figure oh, it out. Oh, well, it was, it was great because what I did was, you know, I'd knit up my four inch square and then I would count my numbers my stitches and my rows and then I'd be like well it's not you know it's I get this this is what the pattern calls for and then this pattern this uh, app shows you what your difference is going to be well okay it's going to be too tight it's going to be this much too tight or it's going to be this far too short or you know well yeah and the one pattern now that you're looking at the 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 bust measurements yeah are, are you don't fit right in one of them right so um we call those odd girls. No, I'm just Don't kidding. call them odd girls. <laughs> I call them fabulous girls. But, <laughs> but I said, look, if this is going to be two inches too small, it's right where it, it, it fits within a bust size that you would wear. Right. So that's one of the things that we've been, you know, kind of, of trying to, to figure out because I finally decided, all right, all right, fine. I'm not going to do that. What I will do is um, this Newlands pattern. So the Newlands pattern is from the Fiber Company, and it's this really beautiful sweater, and it's made with Rotich. Light, my favorite. <coughs> so we did all kinds of swatches to make sure um, and then chose the right size because then it does show you, well, it's going to make it because if you're, you know, I knit a little tighter. So my swatch, the tension's tighter on it. So it will right. be smaller. It will be tighter. And we had that discussion about on the cloud nine because it says, there's your finished measurement with six to eight inches of positive ease. Well, it says six to 10. 
10 oh, inches. Yeah, and that's, that's a, lot. a lot. Like six inches versus 10. Four inches is, I mean, you know. But you, so, so your question though was, does that mean I make it to size and it's going to be that much larger? Right. And what I've been reading about positive ease, and you know, once again, you can correct me if I'm wrong. What they're saying is that's how much positive ease is already built into that pattern. But then, so that it won't add to it; it'll already be there. Then so. why do they even mention it at all? It's just what the pattern is. I know. It's not positive ease; it's the pattern. So that to me sounds like positive ease is like here's what the pattern is, and it's going to be over this or under this. But that's what the I, pattern. I always kind of do it with well, there's some, there's some ease, right? And so I, I if there's a lot, I go down a size because I don't want that much, right, right. like the um, stern knocker from Kate Davies, all hell Kate Davies, all Kate Davies, uh, one. You remember what yeah. I'm doing? Yeah. I'm going way down because yeah. I don't want it that big, right? But so yeah, it positive ease. Read on it. That's about the only thing you can do. Maybe that's what I understand. That right. it's already built in. Well, I think the good part about what I'm with this one is that um, you start, it's the bottom up and it's just the boring stockinette stitch. So it'd be good. So I'll be able to, you know, before I go to invest you, you too much tell. time, yeah. I'll be able to tell to see if it's, if it's too uh, tight and then I'll have to either, you know, frog it or make a, uh, you know, add some additional stitches to make it so it's not so, cause I mean, you know, you just can't, I don't want to be walking around looking like I might be trying to, you know, pick up uh, some people at the, the truck stop. So <laughs> well, that would be if it was negative ease. Well, we don't want the that either. Ease looks like like more, be, I know a little frumpier, but, like dragging a shopping cart. Behind yeah. You well, that's not, you know, gotta, I can't be doing either of those. Things, so, <clears> you know, I, I don't have time to drive. I don't have time for shopping. So, so, so yeah, we, we you know, I'm, I'm doing Flaming June because I have all these other ones I want to start. Yep. So, you so here was this little swatch that I, I was trying for this one. And so I marled it with um, these two yarns and it was it was really cute but it just I still wasn't getting the numbers that she was calling for I mean I can't tell you how many of these stupid things I made I mean with these new size I went up a size I went down a size I tried this I tried that I added this to it I'm like this is just not coming together but, but, but the point of it is she is swatching yeah. And she's not just saying, oh, I'll just go up a needle size. I am trying. She's I listen. She's doing so good. And I'm telling you, if you don't have that app, you know, how much was that app? Like three bucks? Oh, God, I don't bucks? remember, but it was worth it. It was just it's for this so just for this project it. alone. It Unless was worth it. Unless you're a math major or trick. an accountant and you like playing with numbers, this saves you so much work. No, I don't. That's not my thing. That's not my thing. And then I did start, because um, this is my, like, sitting at home in front of the uh, TV project. I did my next, I started my next cast on for um, Nora's Vintage Afghan. This will be my Ma March slash early April square. Um, and this one is, this one hopefully is a little bit more exciting. That's this, this chart starting up. So we shall see what it looks like when it's done. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Also, since we're on sleeve watch 2023, I finally uh, picked up the stitches that I needed to, to start my last sleeve here on the timber. So, so that Look is finally, it's I know. It's been a sleevey week. It has been a sleevey week. So this sleeve is done. This sleeve is, you know, kind of just gotten started, but this is an easy one because now it's just really all stockinette with the exception of the, the slate pattern of a um, twisted rib in the middle. So this is an easy one. So hopefully we'll be done Hold with this Hold that up soon. a minute. We'll talk about what Robin did last night with her sleeve. Oh, Even yeah. Even though it was a different sweater, it's just still the same technique because it was a color work sweater. So here is um, Twisted Rib. You know, here we, it's, it's a nice, it gives a nice tighter fit here. And it gives a little more intricate or interesting feature with cuffs. And so Robin, who is one of our fabulous um, knitters here, she is making this beautiful, beautiful, is this Linnea sweater? Linnea. The Linnea. green and white one that I had. Yeah. was the class. From the... Um, Knitter's Companion. Nordic. Uh, Nordic Knit, yes, Knit Companion. Nordic Primer. Something That's right, like something that. like that. We'll figure it out. But anyway, um, so she was running out of yarn. And so she's like, well, what do I do? And she decided that she was going to then use two colors almost to make it look like brioche pattern. But so she was using the, you know, the main color on the outside and the papa color, the, the contrast color on the inside of this. And it really... It is because her two colors, you have to really look to see them. And yeah. then when you see them, it's gorgeous because yeah. they blend almost too much. I right. was worried when she picked those. Oh, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. stunning. So it's not, it's not, oh, everybody look at my, my, um, sleeves right it's just real subtle yeah real subtle accent it's really yeah it's really beautiful and that and that is a question we get a lot of what happens when you're getting to the end of a project and you're running out of yarn um and so there are several things you can do um oftentimes 
we won't have the same yarn and the lots obviously change every time you you order something new and they make something new um, we can try to see if we have lots that will match it but it's not often we do occasionally occasionally if you, you have a little with something other than making it short sleeve oh, it's just right. short I just, this is it's just pattern design not, we're not going to have a sleeve on this side it's only this side um, so that is one way, or you can reconfigure if you haven't started yet, um, you know, if, you can kind of reconfigure your, your piece. Um, but what are some other options to, what do you do when you, when you start to run short on yarn? I don't, I don't have any arms, remember? <laughs> She's no I shoulders. Run short. Cause She's like, said, look at this, I don't. <laughs> so, you know, when they say you need 13 skeins and there's only 12, fine with me because I won't need that extra one. How many times do I bring back a skein? Of yes. Two? Well, I always feel like it's better to over skein. Over skein, skein. Over yeah. skein is better. That way you don't get... Uh, I know, but, it's, but I, you know... Yes. Yarn, or as Janet says, yeah, I am yarn insecure. I need, I need yeah. to over skein so I'm not so, yarn insecure. Yeah, but I've done that where I've gone ahead and added trim or changed it in a way. Because the, the Dagna one that I'm doing, I'm thinking of making it three quarter lengths because I think I'd like it. But um, that's the yarn I got at Eat Sleep Knit. Yeah. And because, but it was more than the original, the J sweater I was going to do it in. And I'm thinking, well, I've got the brown. I could just add brown on the cuffs or something instead. So I'm already thinking, well, if I don't have enough, I could, I could do that. But then again, I went, how about I'm making it three quarter length? So really drop shoulder. They say drop shoulder, then add on. I don't need to. It's already three quarter <laughs> I'm already there. I'm already I don't even there. have to do it. Um, and then, Remember? You know, I added on to this. <laughs> no, so this I, is short. I remember. I don't even have well, and yet. the thing is too is right right now what has become kind of trendy is adding this crochet finish to it. So if that is something that's interesting to you, you could always add it with just a little different yarn, a different texture, a different weight um, to make it so that you have the extra yarn and it looks like oh this is intentional. So and there's there's a couple of old books out. I know it I don't know whether they're hard to find or not. You can find them in the library by Nikki Nikki Epstein and her books were knitting on the edge. Okay. And it was all these edges that you could do on things and they Different were gorgeous. Kind of trim those types yeah. of things. But it doesn't necessarily mean it saves you yarn. No, means. but I mean if you're changing the pattern completely at that point to change the 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 yarn too wouldn't be so shocking as opposed to like well, oops, I ran out here, and now it's not even close. This is long sleeve, this is short. <laughs> right, my bad. So anyway, so those are just some, some brief suggestions on that. But I am very excited because I did ask Judy Jude to uh, show. She is now to the point where she is going to steek. And we did set up the class here. It's called Take the Eek out of steak but judy is going to and we did it with this that one day yep we, we did we've that. done this live but in I've front been of working all the sorry sweater and i'm to the point where i've blocked it and i've been reading so much Oops. hold on one second hi I'm, we're not open right now and we're in the middle of our broadcast can i have you just come back at noon no you're fine thank you so much we'll see you guys at noon thank you i'm sorry i thought i locked it i guess right. i didn't um so um, I've been reading more on it. You know, this was just a fun little one. And what they say is to block it, steak it, and then block it again. Okay. Did you block this? Yeah. It's been blocked once. Okay. Remember I sent you a picture? I can't remember anything these days. So, no. Yes, I don't it's remember. It's been blocked but... and beaten. Okay. So, um, I did, like I showed on the, on this, on the air before, uh, putting in a back stitch. And some people say, the Norwegians say, oh, you should sew that. I'm not sewing it. I've done that before. But you can sew it. You can sew it on the sewing machine. But I think it makes the edges really, it stretches them out of shape and everything else. But so there, I did that, okay? You can see it. I put it in with pink yarn. Then I began reading that a lot of people, by taking the steak edge, they felt it. They needle felt it. And that secures it in such a way you don't even need the sides because excuse me it's felted so i thought mm, i haven't done that so i decided to buy a kit and i did and a kit comes several ways here's one that comes with finger guards i strongly suggest you get the finger guards <laughs> because when you stab that needle right to the bone it hurts baby it hurts i was telling a friend yesterday knitting and she goes you know what I took, I'm telling on you, Audrey. She says, I took a, I took a sticking class, a needle felting class one time. And she goes, I know what you mean. There wasn't a finger of mine that wasn't bleeding by the time I walked out. Oh, and it, like, they, baby it hurts. hurts. Yeah, it hurts. So you, you get one of these awful looking things like this. Can you see it? 
Now, I, this is a small one. You, I'm give, The one I'm giving you, because I don't want, is big. And I thought that was too big to do a steak aisle okay. through. That would be more like... You Cereal a killer one. or yeah, ice so. sculpture. Okay, yeah. got it, got then it. Then you need a pad to do it on. So it comes with like a felted pad or whatever. Oh, gotcha, but, okay. Know, anything like that. You know, I was thinking, gosh, if you were doing something that you had to go around the edge, you could even use one of those... Um, sewing yams, you know, that little round, they look like an egg. Never mind, you don't sew. <laughs> I want to know what you're talking about, I but I have no idea. <laughs> She's so cute, isn't she? She's so cute. Okay, so I, what I want to show you, as I did a little bit of it, I said, oh, I want to see if this works. Here it is without it being needle felted, okay? I want you to see it's loose. You can see where I did the purling in between, and it's very loose. I would be very afraid to cut that. Is this just a garter stitch that you've got between? Yeah, okay. yeah, you do a garter stitch in between. Here it is after I felted a little bit of it, and you can see. Oh, yeah, and it's much stiffer. Yeah, it's, it's much stiffer. stiffer. It's, it's thicker, yep. so it's going to work. And so um, we're going to do a little bit, and I'm going to continue doing it while she's talking about other things. So my goal is to get this all the way so I can do it. So I only did it a little ways, but this only took like five or ten minutes. Stopped to put a Band-Aid on, and <laughs> then I continued on, you know. <laughs> It didn't say to do it, but I did it anyways. I wet mine a little bit, too, and it seemed to make it go much... Well, it's a little more felting it. Yeah. So I put this underneath, I think, I don't because uh, tilt your phone up. Tilt it up this nope, way? Nope, other way. That there way. you go. So I'm going to put this underneath. It's it's just felt. I don't even know what's inside How is it. it preventing that giant stabbing thing to yeah. go through the table? Well, I was trying it with on my... Um... On your lap? That's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Well, the dog. Um, Here, come on. There we go. Okay. So, no, I tried it with a blocking mat underneath, and it just wasn't enough. You, I guess you need that felt on felt. Yeah. Okay. So then I did squirt mine a little bit right here. I'm going to have you do some, too, so you want to put your finger guard on. Oh, dear. And I wet it. And then that's all I did, just in a circular motion. It doesn't take long. Notice how far I keep my hand away. Yeah. <laughs> My head, it was like, oh my god, there I go. And I just did this up and down. You know how we lose everything? It's right there. Oh no, in the fill it's right here. Oh, on the go. I told you I dropped <laughs> everything today. But just in that few minutes, it's already felting. You can see it's felting. I'm not gonna, gonna have to pull it up. <laughs> I'll probably do a little bit more because it's not quite as thick right there as it is here. Well, we started um just the felting uh, where you get just the, the raw material and mm -hmm. then make it into an animal with uh, my youngest daughter. And she loved it. But we, you know, it was just a singular stabbing, you know, yeah. ice pick as and opposed to this. And you can feel this. that even now. Yeah, it's, it's not quite as. No, it's not as. as so I maybe dry rough. works better. Let me try dry. I don't think it matters. Maybe just more aggressive. Like you so. might be taking out. It's cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> This was when you said this. <laughs> no, Gordon, I don't want to. <laughs> I told you that five times. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you need this from yelling at your kids last night. I did. My God. Yeah, oh, you know my what? God. It does work better dry. All right. Well, now we know. Yeah, try, try. It? try it dry. Why don't you try it? That doesn't usually be better, but okay. Put that thing on what? Your okay. All right. Put this thing on my finger. Do not go past those little lines. Why am I using? Uh, I went. Because the other one, hurts. oh, because you're holding it. It That's what. hurts when you stab oh, it. Oh, I recognize it. It hurts. But so, oh, just from holding it. See, look where your finger is. Get it away from there. Why do I have to have my finger there at all? Oh, this thing broke. You broke my <laughs> Now I owe Judy. <laughs> did it break or did it push down I in? think it pushed down in, but I don't know. Yeah, you did break it. Gosh. Well, now I owe you one of those. Yeah, yeah, I'll take my one back. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'll just do it. Okay. <laughs> so why we can't have nice things. This okay. is why we can't Judy, have nice this things. this is why. Well. Here, you can wear it on the other finger, and then you yeah, can do I'm a fine. puppet I'm show. Fine. This is good. Two, two, two needle felting is good. Two needle felting is definitely not enough. So. Yeah, I guess okay. I was going to. If too I if I stab myself, I just file for workman's comp. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> what do you want? Some ba yarn for workman's comp, or uh, we're getting with Malabrigo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's working. Yeah, no, no it's. I'm take that back. 
Yeah, I may have to take this back for you. You, you take I'll it back. You, you take it back. I'm not worried about it. Coming up. I'm not worried about it. I got. I'll borrow it when I need to, and I'll just use yep, the wagon stuff. My Go birthday. Ahead. My birthday is is coming. I'm turning 27 again. 27 again. I turn 27 every year. Um, this is my last year in my 40s of turning 27, but it's okay. It's good. It's good. Okay. So while she is stabbing the daylights out of this thing, ignore the screen, beating it to uh, its this, submission. This where, yeah, you're. Yeah, go, yeah. girl. Stab it. Stab it. Well, that's okay. So we had somebody ask us about, um, you know, kind of this one skein wonders and stash busters. So there are a lot of things, you know, we we, we get to a, you know an end of a project and you still got you know a good chunk of, of yarn left. Well, what the hell do you do with it? So um, you know they call these projects stash busters or one skein wonders. If you just got this one. Beautiful scan, but you're like, I don't know what to do with it. So the first thing you can do, um, Ravelry is your best friend, best friend, because it's gonna, it's got 11 million different patterns on it. So go to Ravelry, get signed in, just look up one skein, okay? Or if you have a specific kind of yarn, look up that specific kind of yarn, see what people have done with it with one skein, all right? You can always get a book like this. We I have this here at the shop, Knitting Stash Busters. We made this uh, the first year when we were open last year with these little hearts. That was a class that I, I had. It was, remember. yeah, it was really cute. I only had one friend, Lisa. Lisa joined me and oh my God, we laughed so hard. I don't think we even got one heart finished, but boy, do we enjoy ourselves. <laughs> so so there are books like this that you can, you can find. I'm sorry? There's a coffee mug in the back of it. Oh, yeah. So here is, like we, we're doing here for our steaking class, there's this coffee mug warmer. There are um, lots of different things you can do. Uh, a lot of people at this, you know, they have things like phone cozy. I don't know who is actually putting their phone in a cozy, but if, if that's you, one skein project for you. That's a grandma thing. Oh, my I'm God. Sorry. Like, who's doing that? I don't know. I mean, they have some cute things like these little cases, which, uh, you know, I don't know that my daughters would take this pencil case to school, but I would put, you know, um, a lot of my knitting crap in it because I carry around like a what suitcase. What do you put in? Because when, when I, when I, we're going to veer off subject here, man. Weird. How unlike um, us. So, like, when I put in my supplies, what's needed for a class, mm -hmm. I put basic knitting supplies. Yep. What do you consider basic knitting supplies? What's in your little knitting bag? So if you told me I had to bring basic supplies, I would assume, uh, outside of the yarn and the needles that are appropriate for that yarn, I would assume a tapestry needle, I would assume scissors, um, I would assume, uh, I like a little crochet hook like this mm -hmm. in case I drop a stitch or I need to pick something up. Um, sometimes uh, stitch markers, stitch markers would be included in my project, and measuring tape. Those would be the things I... Um, oh, also, I, I like to bring highlighter tape mm -hmm. unless I have a maker. So highlighter tape is great um, okay. when you are working on a new pattern, especially if you're following a chart or you, there's a lot of lines in a row. You can just move it down as you're continuing on there. Uh, probably something to write with because I'm always writing on if it's a printed out pattern. Which I never have. I'm always borrowing yours for some reason. Yeah, no, I, and I have always have 10,000 of them because I just collect them and steal them from other people. So, so this is something that I have in mind, too. Oh, that's smart because and it's an emery board simply because sometimes you get a little uh, if you're like using a burr a burr on your needles yeah uh, um, sometimes your you have a fingernail that it gets it. stuck in yeah. the yarn constantly and robs you of your yep. will to live keep a keep a that's smart uh, yeah an emery board I'll have in to, there too I'll have to add to that yeah um, and then, I know I don't have. I'm just trying to think. I had last night. Um, Robin needed to borrow a tapestry needle. Well, actually, here is my pile of crazy. Um, so I, I, my, my mom passed, my, my stepfather sent me all of her stuff. So I've now inherited all these, you know, things that I probably don't leave. Uh, this is one of my favorite things in there, even though it doesn't belong in there. It's this pin that says, this took effing forever. <laughs> so hand wash it or I will cut you. Okay. It's a little warning. It's okay. Um, yeah. I, you know what else I have? This is, this is, this is my, my weakness is I have to have chapstick because I'm always like, wow. Ah, so that's. Oh, yeah. Hand um, lotion. Some people put hand lotion. Yeah, in I it. have chapstick just because of my. Because of oh, and this I always have this uh, row counter. Row I have a row counter in here. So when we did our felting project before with the needle felting for my daughter, we made this cute little bunny. This is what they gave, was the singular stabbing needle. Get away. Okay. Well, go ahead. So, go ahead and break that. It's yours. No, but uh, oh, that's scary. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I have in my kit. And again, I've you know because I've inherited a whole bunch of other random stuff. I now have like three pairs of scissors, a pencil, 
Hey, I always have, because uh, I love cable, so I always have like 10 different cable needles I in too. there. Just in case I need to whip out a cable. I, I actually have two different bags with me, little bags, and one has scissors in it and the other one. I have to, because, I'll tell you, with the little scissors, I had a little pair of scissors. And when Liz and I went to visit our friend Barb on, on Martha's Vineyard, mm -hmm. we got to go early. And so we're, we're sitting there, and it's like 3 o'clock, and she goes, come on, we're going down to Gasoline Alley's. I go, why? She goes, because it's live lobster night. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm there. So uh, we went down, and it was great. You know, live lobster, whole pound lobster. And then it had been cooked really quickly because there were so many people. Right. And, it was, and so you could not crack that tail. Oh, yeah. And we kept trying and trying. So it was just it. too rubbery. Yeah. We were trying and trying. And I went, wait a minute, Liz, hand me my bag. Because we went straight from like from there. Right. I pulled out those little sewing scissors. I went, <laughs> There you oh, go. We're good. Works for everything. Always ask a knitter. We could, we could, if you need self defense, we've got stabby that's things. A, that's I the mean, weirdest thing I ever used scissors for was to cut open the lobster tail. There you go. Good use of multi multi use. So, and this made me laugh when I got this. This this is from Ames. I don't know. Did you have Ames or was that a New England store that went out of business? I've never had Ames. So Ames. So this is how old this is. Ames has been out of business for many years in Rhode Island. So anyway, that made me laugh. Back to um, bits and bobs, as they call it. They have a lot of things in this book that I'm like. Who on earth would make what this? What is that? I think it's an armadillo. Oh, okay. Or it's an aardvark. I like aardvark. Aardvark's another A animal. <laughs> Some animal with an A. I like the little toys. And these are cute. These little, like, um, loveys, right? So they give you a little animal you can make and a little tiny square. You know what? Those little animals are so cute to, to put to, to um, you know... Safety pin or whatever to a baby blanket is a oh, gift. Absolutely, absolutely. They have cute little things like these little birds. So these are cute little things for stash busters. Um, you know, they always have, you can always make baby booties and baby hats and baby most anything with the exception of a sweater or a blanket. Um, so there are some other things. Um, I have people that make a lot of, you know, these types of things, pot holders. So our dear Arlene, one of our bestie besties, she makes a lot of bath cloths so she she's got her grand littles that love those and she makes the most gorgeous she is really well that was a good way to learn knitting done program. a great job of all these gorgeous gorgeous um bath uh you know bath uh what does she call them bath cloths bath cloths yeah bath cloths bath, is that a new england washcloth washcloth wash yeah fa uh, i don't know washcloth face cloth Face well, cloth like is what we had. Cloth. Face cloth was growing up. We get the face cloth. It's the little ones. But um, so they're bath towels. Little tiny guys. So they're awful sweet. So those are things you can make with one skein. Um, and then you can come up with different projects. So we did a few here. This is um, this is called Mermaid's Purse. So this was one skein, but it wasn't um, a yarn per se. It's sari ribbon. So this was a really fast, fun knit. You can throw it in the laundry. So that way, if you bring it to the beach, you know, it's going to not hold as much sand if you need to put some crap in there, but still carry your stuff. Um, we make a lot of animals at my house. So here's one that we made with this stupid eyelash yarn. Um, Sam, who uh, comes to play here, she makes all kinds of little guys. I love this one she gave to me. Isn't that so, so sweet? So it's just a little tiny a bunny. Color. So cute. So, so sweet. Um, Judy, I stole this a while ago. Judy makes these little um, wit don't, little washcloths, I guess, too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something and you, you can make with this, one skein. It doesn't have to be square. No, it can be it can be just about what you want. This is one skein. Um, she actually we used two. We doubled it just for the class. But this, you know, these market bags. Some of these uh, skeins of of yarn have quite a bit of yardage. So I mean, you can get a lot out of them. Um, this I made recently. Uh, this is just a headband. I wanted to make a headband so uh, we could get Arlene uh, into a new pattern here. So this is herringbone style. Um, we finally figured out how to sew it together. Um, want, not even a skein. So this, we have extras. Uh, trivets. So there are people, uh, Judy made this beauty, um, but a lot strange. of people. That's a stash buster. It's a stash buster because it's not a full skein, but. That's to teach that's, mosaic. Yes. So this is something that stash busting. Um, this is one skein. It's two socks. I The other one's still hanging up, but this is one. It's self-patterning. It looks like you're using all different kinds of yarn. This is called Easel. It is by Universal Yarn. And, um, but that this is, is so much fun. Oh, this one is such, this is such a cool, such a cool pattern. Um, and it is just stuck in stitch but you get definitely a pair of socks out of the one skein um, a stash buster project is I know we've been working on this I know is just Nora's vintage Afghan so it doesn't even take a full skein of yarn so as you go through um, you know and you can choose you can just make it with all the wild things that you got left over and make it kind of one of those you know here's 
some of the patterns that are going on. Like I said, I've got this red one that I just finished and I'm starting a new blue one. So those are things you can make um, with Real just quick one skein. If you want to get practicing shawls. Is this the right side? It's so pretty. You know, I don't like real big shawls. So these were little ones to put on. I forget the name of this one, but I love this one and I get compliments on this it all so the time. Oh, that one's pretty. Well, and these are really great because it's not a huge commitment. So yeah. I just finished, as you know, pressed flowers. You may not know. I finished pressed flowers. But um, so these are the things. Uh, pressed flowers is, is gorgeous, but it's a commitment. I mean, you're I working on it. This is one skein. This is the cupcake mittens that they think is so hard it's okay we don't think it's so hard so all right there is a story behind this okay so we were talking about all right what what, about, what else can we do outside of scarves or these things and judy goes oh well we can make fingerless gloves because it doesn't well, arlene really wanted to make them. arlene wanted to make them so i'm like well all right so judy goes oh i've got this pattern it's so easy i made it when i was first starting to knit and you i'm like actually made it in the car driving so but, while i was driving but yeah. she when she's like oh my god it's so easy i can show you every time she says that we're all like that's not easy what you made is not easy Stop it's it's yarn like. over. So she's like, well, I'm like, I don't know. It's got yarn overs. Like, then you're going to know how to, to knit into the yarn over and stuff. Super cute. These are the cupcake mittens that we feeling. failed. We failed on because we didn't listen to Judy. And every time we asked for Judy's advice, she's like, I don't know. That didn't work on my cupcake mittens. That never yeah, happened so to me. Yeah, another one and they couldn't do it. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't happen to me that when I made my cupcake yeah, mittens. Went, you know how to do this? I went, no, that's not a problem I have with the cupcake mittens. <laughs> Smart ass. This is this is called the this is called cupcake mittens. That's the birthday cake cow. Oh, that's fun. And that was fun. That was one of the first ones. You know what? Somebody somebody thought <clears throat> was a friend of mine though. She goes, she didn't like the yarn. She thought the yarn was really ugly and stuff. And she goes, because it, it did look like a hot mess, boiled up, balled up. And she goes, here if you want this. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And so um, I made this. And she goes, that's really pretty. I went, yeah, that's that yarn you gave me. <laughs> Really? She's like, darn it. <laughs> really? And then you can see her going, damn, why didn't you know? Yeah, this came out gorgeous. That's, and this that's one I love. Skin. This one's one skin too, and it's these very like pretty. like a newsboy hat. Yeah, really pretty. So uh, this, I think at some point we're going to have to have a class on this because the top part of any hat to me is, is where it gets really challenging because if your counts are off, if you don't have the right stitch number, uh, stitches on your needles, your pattern doesn't line up, first of all. And then they've got all these really, you know, sometimes you can't see the decreases as you're going. And then you get to the top and you're like, uh, what's going on here? So I think we'll have to, we we'll have to do it. We need a class on decreasing, how to watch for a decrease, right. decrease, how to find it. Right. Well, because increases. too, as you're, as when you're knitting and you're, you know, join two, join two or whatever, sometimes you just can't see. No, this one was easy because when you went to do the decrease, you knit it instead of purling it Got so it. you could see it. Yeah, yeah, that you one's nice. really, really see it. That one's nice. But a lot of times, you know, they do kind of like that beautiful star pattern. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but if it's not lined up right, it's like, and then you have to pull the whole thing apart. And pulling that apart can be a bit of a nightmare because you don't know where you've dropped all these stitches. And then you have to try to figure out if you haven't done a lifeline, where to pull back to so that you know, all right, well, now I need to be here and I need to decrease every nine stitches or, or what have you. So, yeah, and you talked about... <clears throat> The, the leftovers, your stash busters mm -hmm. and stuff. Because, like, here's a couple you got skeins. On. I don't know why I bought them. Oh, well, I do know why I bought this one. Because she couldn't leave without this it. Is, no, this is where I got my idea for Spanish moss. Ooh. And this, I have no idea why I That's bought pretty. it. And I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with it. But here's the thing. Huh. What if you have a, a, a hat like this, and it's plain, and it's like, eh, it's okay. And I've seen this down, and we're going to do a class on it as soon as I get the hat done. You weave in and out a little patch, a colored patch. Mm, that'd be fun. I know. Wouldn't it look cute? What if your favorite sweater or you have a cardigan that is, um, you know, very plain and you would like a little color to it. Some embellishment on it. Put a pocket on. Knit a pocket. Sew it on. And there's so many different ways That's to do it. What if you knitted a patch and put it on your sleeve? I've been seeing this woman on Instagram, and I, I can't remember. I can barely remember what I just ate five minutes ago. So, um, And she's been, at the end, in a stockinette stitch, she's been kind of weaving yarn throughout in different colors. And it looks beautiful. It looks like you've done uh, a mosaic. But yeah, and it looks like you've woven like it on a loom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. So that would be, that would be fun. Yeah, Judy, make that happen. How do you yeah, do that, Judy? I, I will. Judy, get on that. Oh, I'm working. 
put on like five sweaters. That's but all? um That's fine. yeah, but I uh I do have that hat and I in fact I bought I took that yarn home like probably about eight months ago and I still haven't done it. The gray and I was gonna weave in and out. Mm. So save me your leftover bra stuff, because that would be pretty in the gray. Yeah, I got that. With you. Okay. Yeah, I got that because I didn't even use, you know. No, because you weave it in and out, and it does. It looks really cute. But I and you know, cute little. I've seen little um, pockets that are shaped like a heart, yeah, or whatever. And then just sew it on. So well, different. And then if you're really, really brave, and you like a sweater, but yet let's say you know it's here and it's worn out and it's a hole, put in a lifeline and a lifeline, and add a stripe all the way around of another Ooh, color, kind of like an afterthought heel. That's a drink. <laughs> another story yeah um, so okay so that is <laughs> throw off my mind that see that and that would be a good thing too because you know at this time of year people are starting to put away their their winter knits and so I've talked quite a bit about how to store and good ways to clean it before you want to clean it before you put it away because moths can smell stuff that maybe you don't see and they're attracted to it and so they eat your stuff and even with cedar down here I've pulled a lot of my stuff out, and you'll go, oh, look, it's a little hole. Mm -hmm. So I save a lot of my leftovers because I've mended a couple right. really quick. And you know what? I've just learned not to freak out over it. I know a lot of people freak out. And they take their yarn. And they put it in the freezer for a month or whatever. Right. It's like, I don't have enough hours no, in the day. Go, no. you Plus, know? I can barely figure out well, like where the chicken nuggets are, let alone yeah, what yarn I've got stashed in my freezer. Go. Right, okay. Can, do you know my kids need to feed themselves with this this area? Okay. So, but, um, you know, you just mend it, and you go on. Well, I, the thing I is, too. Live with that down here. Here's the thing. The thing is with moth holes. If you have something that is purchased, um, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw myself under the yeah. bus with this horrible thing. I have this lovely gentleman that came in. His wife had just passed away, and he took out this sweater. Now, if if it is bought from a store, most of the time it's it's machine done. It's, it's mass produced. It's mass produced. It's perfect, okay, in its form. And if you're buying it from high end, they're not gonna sell you something that's imperfect, or they send Unless it to. Unless you're gonna pay big bucks. Right. And, and yeah, so he brought it in. He's like, well, it's got a hole in it. And even though, you know, it was just this little line, okay, it's you when you lose the integrity, okay, when part of your knit gets pulled apart, okay, in order to get it to come together again, you can't re-knit it, especially on these machine ones. You have to put it together, right, and then sew it. So you're always left with a pucker, all right? So I literally have tried this. I ask, ask my family how many hours I've spent trying to go, maybe if I knit it this way, maybe if I try to knit with this tiny thread, maybe if I, no, nope, it's always going to have a pucker. So, and a guy isn't going to want a cute little patch over it. No, no. So, um, so these are the things, if it's just a couple tiny moth holes, you can try to kind of pull it, pull it in and then just kind of pull it in a squish, but you're still, if you're taking away stitches, you can't, unless you replace unless them. Unless you add them in, like Julia Clay does. Well, you've got some crazy knitting besties, but, uh, but it's it's going to be a pucker. So I've I've stopped saying that I'm going to help. I mean, I'll, I'll always try to help. That's just who I am. But for the most part, it's it, you can't do it without it being and, noticeable. And if you don't know the pattern, the little girl that came in with a crocheted wedding dress. Just it was gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. It was but gorgeous. But it wasn't going to work as a dress. No, and so and she had it like God. She was so calm. I would have been having two a, weeks a, away, two from weeks away from her wedding, and she's like, well. It doesn't quite fit. My grandmother made it for me. It was gorgeous. All lacy, lacy, lacy. But I'm like, well, I, can't, I don't crochet. It. There's no way she could wear it without a line. No, God, no. Unless she was having that kind of wedding at Vegas. Woo, woo. But she was going to need a really pretty slip under it of some type to be pretty. It was what gorgeous. What was it she wanted down? She wanted to add some extra panels in the back, and she wanted something up here with yeah, a little bit hung more. Down too low. Yeah, so there were a few additions that she wanted to make, and... Um, we just couldn't do it. I mean, well, even Nancy, who's who's crochets who up on, everything. Uh, yeah, she says without that pattern right. and that yarn, right. I can't do it not, to match. Not without it being obvious. Not without it being obvious. So, you know, those are things I, to I keep consider. Wondering what she did because she was two weeks away. I think she ended up buying something. I think she would have had to. Yeah, she, she was a beautiful young lady. Oh my, she was gorgeous. I was like, oh, and it would have been so pretty. Stunning. On her. But maybe she can just wear it on her honeymoon over her bathing suit. At least she got it for the wedding. <laughs> So, so, so those are some ideas for one stash fun. Are we chopping your sweater today or? I don't know. <laughs> I want to, but I don't have time to work on it. Okay. You so know? you may want to hold off on Thursday. it. I'm leaving Thursday. 
I know, Judy's got a big adventure coming and up. And I don't have time this week to pick up those stitches because once I cut this, yeah, I've got to pick go. Them up. I, well, I, I wouldn't worry about the front, right? But I got to pick up the um, the the neckband too. Yeah. Well, see, look at the back. Show the back. See, that is felted. That is felted. Look at this, how flurfy it got. It's not going to. No, it's not going to come apart. Not once it's felted. That would make me more comfortable. I think I think my fear is that you spent all this time and money with the, with the yarn um, to steek it. What if? I know it's. I know millions of people have done it, Tracy. I know. I know all these things. But in my own brain, I'm like, but me. I'm I've done a, it. I've I, done it. I'm doing it. I can do it. <laughs> no. It's easy. Let me show you. No, but it's for me. I'm a catastrophe. I, everything in my life is always like, a, 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 only you. I'm like, no kidding. Now, so, I, it's one of those things. It's kind of like I was telling poor Claire the other day when she's doing those short rows. Right. If I'm doing German short rows, whether it's a heel or whether it's the shaping on a sweater, I make time to do it all right. in one sitting. Right. To stop halfway right. is just to court dan danger. Right. Make time for it, you know? Right. That's, that gives you, you an commit. excuse to commit. sit on your butt for two hours <laughs> instead of cleaning so like, the house. You'll be like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Well, that was me last night. So I'm like, all right, I got my beginning part. Now I had to start. But, you know, and it always, anything, anything starting off sucks. And anyone that says yeah. otherwise is either doing something super easy or they're full of crap. Because until you can see your pattern and until you can see where this is going, it's still like, okay, what, does this make sense? Am I doing this right? Did I drop a stitch? Is this how it's supposed to be? So I'm sitting, I'm like right here and I have all this to do on this beginning of these cables. And it's a new one to me. So I'm not, you know, in front and back and blah, blah, blah. And just, so I don't have the cadence down yet. And this is the time my daughter's like, Hey, what are you watching on TV? Did I tell you about this thing? Mom, did you answer me? What are you having about? Oh, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm going, two, okay, pin the back, knit, purl, knit, purl, purl. I'm yeah. getting louder. <laughs> well, see, and that's, that's like, the thing with this because of, even I had to readjust because, well, there's a hole. Oh, I gotta fix that. Here, do you need a. Okay, never mind. Um, no, I just, it just needs to be pulled up. Again, that's don't need Stephen a Weaven problem. There you right go. There. Stephen Weaven. Love me some Stephen Weaven, but I'm saying no, it's, it's it sometimes um, shows up on, on the reverse side. It messes up my attention. Yeah, it does, especially if you're knitting something heavy. But see, even this was all the way around. Yeah. And then it says cut all the way up and add on. So then I had to count and separate. Yeah. And, and I had to cut two of my cords so I could get two oh, separate girl. ones. Girl. So to do it now and not be able to pick up the stitches right now. Yeah, away, you'd, be, you'd be a wreck about I'm it. I'm afraid it would stretch. Yeah, no. Totally. And I don't want it to stretch. And there's a lot of little finagling. You know, I hate I hate picking up neck bands because oh, to the me, shoulder is blah. Well, and, and then bleh. it's if you do it too close, then it becomes, you know, kind of, uh, not gappy, right. like scrunchy, you know, kind of all tight. I don't know. It's But this is also a good example of my secret three-needle bind-off. Because oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about I'm gonna, I'll I want talk you to about keep it here this to real me. quick. Again, look at, you can barely tell. Three-needle bind-off. And I learned this at a, at a convention one time. And, and what she was saying was, when you do three needle bind off, you're working right sides together. Yes. Okay. But you're on the pearl side when you do it, correct? I'm gonna go with yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm going with yes, Judy. <laughs> Here it is. Which side am I on? You're on the pearl side. Okay. So if you're if you're doing a three needle bind off, you do it knit wise. Okay. Right? Yes. That doesn't make sense because you're on a pearl side. I agree. That's why it never makes sense to me. Okay. So what you do is and, and you just have to think about it a minute and you do it. And she did it and that's why I've done it because show that. That's my seam on the inside. I mean it's gorgeous. It doesn't even look like it. This looks like Weaving Steven for my stuff. Look at, there it is, there it is. Okay, so here's your two needles, okay? And you've got the, the back and the front and you're gonna do your shoulder seam. You take your other needle and what you do is, you should be, instead of knitting two together, you should be purling two together. Okay. But to purl, but when you knit it, remember you go back front, back front. That's hard to do, purling. Yeah. So you take them all off and put them on one needle. Okay. Per, back so you just front, go back and front, back yeah, and forth. Okay. Back front, back front, back front, back front. So they're all on one needle. Turn it. Now they're all on this needle. Now you bind off knit wise. 
no, pearl wise. I'm sorry. Now you bind off pearl wise. Okay. Pearl two together, bind off. Pearl two together, bind off. Because you've got them all on here. So you pearl two. So you, when you pearl two together, you've got the back and front on one needle. Yeah. So it's pearl two together, pearl two together over. And then over, right. over. Bind off. And it makes this beautiful invisible seam. All right. I'm gonna have to try and that. Because a lot of people say, oh, but you know, I don't like using. Three needle bind off on the shoulders because it's never strong. You feel that, baby? That's no, that's strong. it's and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you can't so, see. All right, and I'm it's doing not this bumpy. On. It's not bumpy on the outside. Yeah, on this next sweater, I'll have to try. It's this like out. the best tip I paid sixty five dollars for. That was worth it. That was worth it for that one dip. Yep, that was worth it. Judy, so Judy rushed out of here. Uh, what was it? Tuesday? Wednesday? When did you rush out of here? To she had this thing. Oh, it was Wednesday. So <laughs> she she so rushed out of here. She's like, I have I have to go. I've I've got, I'm, I'm doing this um online class. I'm like, oh yeah, go girl, go girl. So she buzzes out of here, and then I'm you know I'm wrapping up you know because it was I still had an hour left at the shop. So she's like. Oh my God, this woman's been talking for 20 minutes all about herself. She hasn't even talked about knitting. I'm like, yeah, people probably mean. say that about us too. She's like, um, but we're funny. I'm like, it's true. It's true. So she was really good. And she was talking about, and I can't think of her name. I, I invited you to join her group on Facebook today. Yes, I saw that. Um, but the one thing that she did that I thought was so interesting, of course, she's talking about what is Norwegian and Scandinavian. And, and, you know, she, she had the little map. I took, I took screenshots of everything and she talks about how you have your family motif and this hers is the the, the rose okay. and she uses that motif in just about everything she does because that she, that's her family right you know and, and, you know, they're so, they're, well they're a lot older than we are in america we still haven't <laughs> yeah we don't have that kind of history here so this is what i thought was interesting she talked about worsted weight yarn and wool yarn and everybody thinks well if you're knitting with wool it's worsted and it's not necessarily right and she talks about how the you know if you if you really study the history of, of scandinavian um sweaters and the you know the, the they started with fishermen you know right. doing those yeah and they're really a lot airier than knitting with worsted so wool yarn is is uh, for sweaters is not worsted. Worsted yarn and wool yarn are two different things. Yeah, and um, because it's a lot airier, it's not denser, so it it you know it's it's more waterproof. It actually keeps you warmer because it doesn't trap the air. You know. Yeah. So she showed a picture, and I'll have you do it. This is like if you're looking under a microscope of one strand of woolen yarn, and she's spelling it W O O L L. Ian, so mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a type of sheep or not. I, I my mind wandered for a second. I think I dozed off. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> and and worst in your I think it did. But look at that and you can see it's like if you're looking at under a microscope, can you see the difference? The top is worsted. The bottom is wool and yarn, and you can see how much dense, I mean, airier it is. Well, I mean, that's why with those heavy sweaters, you know, there's a there reason it breathes. There's reasons right. it, you know, it, it deflects water and, you know, and, and those types of things. That's why they wear them on the boats. Um, it is, it is, you know, much more But I never really efficient. understood it till I saw that. Right. And I thought that was so cool. Yeah. That was worth the free hour of sitting there and watching it. And right. Well, I mean, a worsted weight is just one of those standard size, you know, uh, I can't think right now, but, uh, well, it, I thought it always had to do with plot. Yeah. And I don't uh, no. Nope. It doesn't. Now we've learned. Now you've seen it here. It second, was, uh, yeah, we learned something. Yes. We, I love that. I love learning something new every day. Yeah. So, Judy. Um, like, yeah, I can have my turn signal on and you're still going to pull in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was random, but okay. Somebody, somebody on Facebook the other day and, and started griping about people that don't use their turn signals. I'm Rhode like, Islanders don't. And I you know what I put on there? Ain't nobody's business where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, so anyway, so Judy loves to spend my money, and she'll tell everyone that. So I like to throw it out there. She's like, "I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this sweater, and I needed new colors anyway." So I always say, "All right, Judy, pick out some colors." She goes, "Oh, good." So um, she's got this beautiful sweater that she's been. Um, it's it's now. Um, Oh, hail okay, Kate Davies. Davies. 
So here is the Kate, Dady, Kate, Kate Davies sweater that she's going to be making. So look at the colors she had me order. Okay. So I she's got one whole Sunday just playing with colors. Uh, Thank God Barocco will let me on their side. Right? So this main blue color she's going to do in this. All right? And then the rest of this pattern, the color work pattern down here, let's just call it the star. Look at what she has chosen. Oh. All right, so we've got... You take three, I'll take three. Colors. Right. Six colors. And that's in any, not in any particular order at this point. So these colors all together... Look at them! ...are going to make the star pattern. So... And then the, the indigo... God, I know, isn't that gorgeous? So my one thing with the indigo and these colors, I thought using white... Too stark. Too stark. It would just... Yep. Bleh. And I wanted everything to blend a little bit more. Yep. So I went with this. I want to forget. What was this one called? Uh, rye. Is it rye? Yes, ma'am. Why do I keep thinking I, I tried rye and I didn't like it? No, because you tried something else that I have okay. here. That, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stone. I, you tried I stone. I tried stone and it was too gray. Right. And I wanted something that was a little creamier, but not cream. And I really liked that. That and looks I thought, oatmeal -y to I me. thought that. And, and actually, the color I had you order right. was this one. Right. And when we put all those together with it, I just it didn't like that stark. green. It, it was, was just too, too much. That's the only thing you looked at. So we sat there. But and isn't I, this gorgeous? This will be my next color I project. I kept thinking, I can't tell her to order more green. <laughs> she, she, will, she will hurt me. <laughs> but I went, hey, what about this green? And I uh, this green is perfect. Yeah, it is this perfect. This is my favorite color in the spring anyways. Yeah. The spring, when the new leaves come out. Like and baby. They, this baby green. Oh, baby grass. Baby There's leaves. a certain time when mm -hmm. you take the... The, the Turnpike 77 through, um, I'm doing this because it's West Virginia, <laughs> and you're on the Turnpike two times of the year. One is you hit this thing and all you see are mountains, and in the fall, if you hit it just right, and in the spring when everything is this color. Yeah, it's all, it's all blooming. It's just dazzling. Just blooming. So that's always been my, one of my favorite colors. So that's it. That's going to be my summer knit along. All right. Well, I'm going to have to turn the air conditioning way up. Right, but let's, but let's, no, I'm using I'm using vintage, and again, she did it in in double. And this is where we're going to talk about size here in a minute. She did it in um, <clears throat> two strands, right? Two strands, because she did it in Aaron rate, and you know how I feel about that. That just can't do Aaron. It's too hot for down here. So if you look at the sizing table, and it is supposed to be um, way. A lot of positive ease. It's supposed to be loose, and I, I like. I don't want it to drag on me, and that's what it kind of looks like. Even well, it looks very grandfather sweater, yes. which there is a place for those. But if you don't want that, then you have to play with the pattern. So, her smallest size is fifty four inches, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm a bigger booba girl, but I'm not that big, right? You know. And then there's a lot of positive ease put into it. Everything I think fifty two or whatever. Well. I'm not doing it double. Right. So this is worsted. Mm -hmm. So I had to play. And again, I used that Knit Trick app. And it came down. And if I did it, and I, I had some old... Oh, no, I came here and you had some vintage. So yeah. I, I, I did it a swatch. Because what I thought was going to work did. And um, <clears throat> it came out that if I used this and I did this, it would come out 11 inches too small. Which is good because... Well, I don't want to be a 44, though. I'm not really quite a 44. So, the next size up is a 64. So, if I take it down to a 52, right. it'll be giving me just, just enough. enough ease that it's oh, going to work. Yes. Oh, yes and it even does. yes, sir. And the other thing that's weird about this, I don't know whether you can see it, The po there's a pocket right here that a lot of people go, oh, that pocket's so weird. I'm not going to put it in there. But I'm going to put it in there. Not that I'll ever use it because I'll be walking Love around like this pockets. all the time. Got my pocket. <laughs> Pull out my pocket watch. The train will be here. <laughs> the train's going to run. I'll take out my one eye uh, monocle. So <laughs> I feel like I'm in a saloon. A dumb train coming. Um, anyway, um, the, the construction starts with the pocket. You what? Start you with, start with the pocket. Yep, it says right here. This oversized slouchy cardigan begins by knitting two pocket flaps. The cardigan Weird. is then cast on and joined for working in the round with a steek. This will be steek. Oh, if she doesn't break the rest of my needles. And a deep and dramatic color work band is then worked. And then you join 
before joining the two pocket flaps to the top of the band and binding off the front steek. So you really only steek to here and the rest of this is back and forth because you can see she did a seam. Interesting. You start with the pockets. I know. So, I, you know, a lot of people said, oh, but I didn't do the pocket. And, then, you know, I don't really like the pocket either, but I want to learn that technique. Just check that out. Well, that this one had this one had a pocket, and you did the pocket in, in yours. Yep. But the way you had it, it, ha it they have you kind of um, add all these little extra stitches and then hold, put them in a holder yarn and then continue to yarn. And so then I just had this little chunk of yarn and it was throwing off the inside. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, forget I this. Know, I know. So I was like, eh, I, I just took it out and tied a knot. I'm like, I'm not doing this. But somebody who's a good knitter yesterday was looking at my book and she said the same thing. She goes, the charts are the best charts. She oh, does the beautiful. best charts. Yeah, they're very beautiful. And I've taught my knitting group now in Sun City to say it too. All hail. All hail Kate, Kate Davis. Um, yeah, the charts are just stunning. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to have to do this one because everybody stops at this one. Okay, so this one to me looks to like like uh, quilting. Yeah. Isn't it just gorgeous? So that will be a fun... Dude, you should start that. <laughs> She's going to hit me with the book. Or stab me with the needles. Where's that one that just broke off? I had it. <laughs> um, it's in my I do want to do, do the socks. Yeah, okay. Gretchen, I should show that. I should show that. We'll, we'll have to oh we'll have God. to post that one on the face. She's so funny. But um, so those are those are definitely something that we've got to have coming up. Um, we're also looking at how to make a sweater that fits you because this is a question that we get. We get a lot. A of requests lot. For that. A lot. Like I can't. Uh, you know, I can't figure out, is this going to, or why did this not work? Or why does this not look like that? Well, you know, and again, so looking at your sweater pattern, you know, swatching, as you know, since I, we talked about it at the beginning we'll of this. do one whole class just on what was measure. You got to measure yourself. Right. You have to know your measurements. Right. And, you know, it's like I've done that, you know, I can show you tons of socks when I first started knitting socks that don't fit me. Right. Because and then I started learning this size works for me, you know. Well and, and so even now, I know with sweaters, right. if I look at a bus side and I know that um, works either, you know, a little bit. I know how to work around that. Right. But it's from doing measurements. And I'm constantly still going, I'll stand up. And we're watching TV and I stand up going, don't you leave? Nothing. I want to make sure that's the size my hips really are. You know? <laughs> well, the other day, so we got talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the finished chest size measurement of the sweaters that I was looking at. And she's like, well, what size are you? And I, so I, you know, I said, well, what, here's what my bra size is. And she's she like, lied. I didn't lie. It is the size of, I show you right now. It's the size of my my, I went with what the what the bra size measures. She goes, no, you're not measuring in the right place. You were measuring underneath, right? Went, yeah, nope. We gotta go right across. She's the like, so I'm like, just. She goes, you want me to do it? I'm like, so then we our friendship took a whole other whole other turn. The, the work wife. Burr, 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 burr. But we, I'm like, okay, whatever. So this is where, yeah. That, I've so taught, that's I've taught a measuring class before. Yeah, because you think it. Well, that's what my bra size is. That's what you measure. Nope, that's not where you measure for this. I'm like, okay, so. Well, yeah. And you have to be honest, not what you want it to be. Not if you want it to fit. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, too. And I was, I was, I had that book and I took Which I took book? It home. Oh, the book I made you give back to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I took it the home. Making, Maggie, yeah. Maggie, whatever. And, and. You know Maggie, whatever. All those books she, she did. She did How to so Make good. Your Sweater Fit. And it's a great book. It's it is. A great it's, and it's beautiful, book. too. It's I, a beautiful book. If you book. see my copy of it, it's, it's all highlights. all highlights. Because it's so good. But one of the things that she said that stuck to me and I remembered it, was that she went from garment making, sewing, to knitting. And everything she was making was coming out so big. And finally she had a teacher sit down and say, the difference is a sewn piece of fabric. How much are you stretching it? A knitted piece of fabric has way more give yeah. and is a lot more forgiving and you have to factor that in right. to your knitting. If you're knitting everything the way you sew a garment, it's, it's gonna always going to be too big because you're, you're, you're adding seam allowances right. and everything well, else. And you with don't knitting, need to. you need to factor in the kind of yarn you have. So we were talking, somebody was uh, yesterday buying some linen and I said, listen, so she's like, well, I, I, you know, I don't want it to be too long. I said, well, you need to factor in the fact that it's going to stretch. So, you know, maybe you make it a little bit shorter knowing that you're going to have some stretch. If you don't want it to be down to here for your sleeves, 
factor that in because it really does make a difference in your finished piece. It does. It does. So, you know, there's a lot of that. And, and our little girl here this week learned so much about swatching. I'm getting, I grew up. I grew right. up. I'm She's a big girl me. now. She's Yay. becoming me. She's, I'm, get, I'm ornery and bitter yeah. and changing. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> What are you going to Halloween this year? A bitter retiree. I'm going, I'm, Judy and I are just going as us. Fine. You don't like it? Shove it. <laughs> so, and on that happy note, thank you so much for joining us. You learned a lot from I us did, today. I did, and I did. We're, we're, we're and bleeding free. Mm -hmm, we didn't. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't uh, have any any hemorrhaging at the table from uh, open wounds or anything this this class. No, I so. should just break something in mind. But that's okay. I'll get her another one for her birthday. But that's good because um, <laughs> this one worked. I thought it would be too big, but it wasn't. Nope, I showed and you. you. Know it was meant to be. That's why. You know what? I bought a cheap one. And now that I know I really like doing it this way. Well, we're going we're gonna to throw it down some cash on it you know what and i think and uh, we'll talk about that as soon as you hang out all right so anyway thank you um next week we are going to talk about uh i don't know maybe different uh summer summer things and and weights and things like that i don't know it's, it's like in the 80s now your guess yeah. is as good as mine it's 80 here today oh, we're ready yeah. for summer oh yeah so hope you have a fabulous week if you have any questions of course always reach out and if there's something you want us to discuss in our zany way we're here for it, all right? Um, and again, check us out. I am on shrimpandknits.com. You can check us out on all the social media under either Shrimp and Knits or Maggie Loves Yarn, and we thank you for your support. If you like this, please subscribe and share because every little bit does help us. And we, come to the shop. Absolutely. Come visit. Our, come, our classes often. are worth the trip. Our classes are worth the trip, and you, we are the premier color work place in the Low Country. So thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Take care. Bye.